Hi everyone. So today's focus is going to be on a special type of polar graph called roses. And uh, once you're done, you can do half of the math Excel that goes with it and then watch the Lemnus Gates video, or you can watch them both and then do all of the homework that goes with it. So these are what roses look like. They're kind of fun to graph. So on your handout or on the handout that's online, this is the first problem that you'll be looking at. So what I did to help you see what's going on, and I'm gonna do my very best to graph it by hand here with just my mouse. I filled in the table of values for you, and we're gonna plot each of the values as we go along. So we're graphing this equation, r equals six cosine two theta. So notice it has this number in front of the theta, which is what makes it different than a circle. Okay. So the first point, if you put zero in for theta, you're doing cosine of zero, which is one, and then times six, which is six, where we're graphing at the angle of zero and the radius of six. And the same thing is going to apply. I picked specific values here because they would give us whole number answers. So pi over six is at three. Feel free to go ahead and stop the video and figure out these values yourself if you'd like. The negatives are gonna be a little bit weird as we go through it. So at pi over four, we have a radius of zero, so we're actually plotting at the origin. And then at pi over three, we have a radius of negative three, which means we're going across the origin to the third circle over here. So the order that this graphs in is kind of a big deal. And like I said, I'm gonna do my best to graph this with my mouse here. Okay, so we're there. And then at pi over two, we're down at negative six. So pi over two is here, but negative six is down here. So we're here. And that is going to give us basically two halves of two petals. And as I continue, if I were to continue plotting all of the points that are given here, I don't see already I got a problem. I'm going to go ahead and graph this next point. So it's going to go there, back through the origin, over out here to six, back to the origin, and then up to six on the pi over two axes. Now, obviously, these. Um, petals are not really drawn very well to scale, so we're going to have decimals do the rest of the graphing for us. But it's important that you understand that the graph is formed in this order, so it continues to make these loops, not like one petal here and pick up and start over, but they actually go in a specific order. And this will be important for you to understand for calculus for next year. So the main thing I wanted you to get out of that was that these roses graph in a specific order. But now we need to understand how to actually graph them without having to plot all of these points, okay? So normally we would have you guys figure this out yourself and do a little discovery, but um, to keep the video short, I'm just gonna give you all the information and show you all the graphs that are here. So here are the first four graphs. All of them are sines and cosines, but they all have a number in front of the theta that is even. So we have two theta, 8 theta, 4 theta, and 6 theta. And so that's going to be a big deal because if you don't have an even number, then it changes the shape of the rows. So notice that the length of each petal, if you can tell from the graph, is the number out front. So I have 4 sine 2 theta. So I went out to the fourth. Here's the second circle. Here's the fourth circle. The length of the petal is 4. And there are 2n numbers of petals, meaning whatever number is in front of the theta, if it's even, we double it, and that gives us the number, number of petals. So this is a 2, so I have 4 petals. This is an 8. This rose has 16 petals. Down here, this is a 4, so we have 8 petals. This is a 6, so we have 12 petals. And again, the length of the petal is dependent on the number out front. So this length is 3, this length is 4, and this one's length is five. And then cosine roses always have a petal on the polar axis. So you can see there's one right here. Same thing with this one. 
Sign roses always have a petal. Well, they basically have a petal that starts on pi divided by 2n. So for instance, n here is 2, pi divided by 2 times 2 is 4. So there's a petal on the pi over 4. And this one's a little bit harder to tell, but this would be the petal would be on the pi over 16, which is this first petal right here in the spot. Both of the type, both um, sine and cosine roses here, when the n is even, have symmetry across both the polar and pi over 2 axis. Okay, so we're going to do a little practice. So I'm going to talk about each of these before I show you the graph. And I'm just going to type a little bit next to it as opposed to writing. So this is a polar graph, polar rose, that'll have a petal of length 1. And it will have four total petals with the first one on the polar axis. So there you go, okay? Length of 1, petal on the polar axis. Okay, this one next to it over here, it has a petal length of five. It will have eight petals. And the first petal, or the main petal, because this is a sine curve, will be on pi divided by eight. So length of five, notice that there are the same number of petals in each quadrant. So two in the first, two in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth, and they are all split up evenly. You could actually figure out the angle between each of them by taking and dividing two pi by eight, because that will give you the space between each of them. So pi over four is the distance between each petal, but the first petal actually occurs at the pi over eight line. All right, and then this one down here has a petal length two. It will have 12 petals, and it is signed. So the first petal will occur on pi divided by 12. With pi over six, the distance or the angle in between. So let's take a look at it here. Okay, so there you go. You can see our 12 petals. There are three petals in each quadrant, and the first petal will be on the pi over 12 line, and then you would move pi over 6 between each of them. Okay, so not always are we going to have an even number in front of the theta. Sometimes it'll be odd. So that's the next thing we're going to talk about. So I'm going to show you all these graphs in just a second. But the Main information I want to show you is down here. So if you have the n, the value in front of the theta is odd, it changes things just a little bit. Um, the first thing that it changes is that there are only n petals, meaning if there's a three here, then there will be three petals. If there's a seven here, there'll be seven petals. If there's an eight though, there'll be 16, so it doubles. The length of the petal is the same, so that doesn't change. Um, and the separation between the petals is still 2 pi divided by the number of petals. I said that before I hadn't actually written it down, but here it is here. Um, the first petal will occur on the polar axis if it's cosine, and again on pi divided by 2n if it's sine. The main thing um, that's different is the symmetry. When I show you the graph, you'll be able to see what's going on with the symmetry, but the symmetry is a bit different. Other than that, they're basically the same. So let's go back up and look at this first one here. So this one is r equals 2 cosine 3 theta. So let's talk about that. So the length of the petals is 2. And there will be 3 petals. It's cosine, so the first petal will be on the polar axis. And then there will be, either think of it as 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 single measure between each petal. Between each petal. Okay, so let's take a look. So there's a picture. So length of 2, first petal on the polar axis, and then the angle between each petal is 120 or 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 here, 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. All right, so let's talk about this. 
sine one, the length of the sine one is four. There are five total petals. First petal being at pi divided by 10. And the angle between each of them will be 2 pi divided by 10. So less than that, or pi over 5. Okay. Let's look at this one. And remember, you can always just go back and go on decimals and make up a whole bunch of these on your own and see what they look like. Okay, so there is your five petals. This dotted line is to show you that it, this is actually the line pi over 10, and then the distance between them would be pi over 5. 1 pi over 5, 2 pi over 5, 3 pi over 5, 4 pi over 5, 5 pi over 5. Okay, next. Oops, I was trying to decide if I want to do this one. I don't, so I put skip here. I was trying to remember why. It's because it's an even one. We just did those on the last screen. Okay, so this one I'm not going to give you all the details for. I'm just going to show you the graph. Hopefully it's starting to make a little more sense. I will say that this one is kind of upside down versus what it normally would be, and that is because of the negative out front. So the negative flips where the graph would normally work out. Let's take a few minutes to um, look at that. Maybe try a few on your own and then go ahead and give Math Excel a try.